We moved on to this place in 1999. Uh, we rented it for seven years from the Hollenbeck family, their neighbors, because uh, my dad's place is down the road about 10 miles. Um, purchased it in 06 from Hollenbeck's. They knew that we would keep running cattle on it. We ran our own cattle separate from my mom and dad's place until 2012, my father passed suddenly from a heart attack. Uh, so then we, we took on both places. My dad said, he said, you know you're prosperous when you got tall grass and a big funeral. His funeral was huge. And his grass, we are, um, we're, we're getting the dividends of what he did. Um, he went through the 80s, early 90s, financial. I was young, um, too full of myself to understand what was going on. Uh, I understand now, somewhat walking in his shoes. If he would have overgrazed, he could have helped himself financially. It's evident. He could have ran more cattle, and he told us, riding the hills with him. He said, I refuse. I absolutely refuse. I'm not going to overgraze this place. This is, this is who I am. And now we can see it in the diversity of the plant life on the ranch that him and mom bought in 1982. Now we need to take it the next step. My family and I are committed. I'm the driver, but they're with, them, with me every day. I think there's things we can do. There's places that, uh, on his ranch that hardly ever got grazed. Again, water, cattle just didn't move there. I know with the cross fencing and temporary fence and water, we can do a much better job, utilize that, improve the diversity there. We're also using temporary water, running pipe above ground for moving cattle around. Where we've evolved the most um, with the help of NRCS and Ryan Beer, and I do have to say Daryl Smith, our neighbor, my mentor. I was watching Daryl move his cattle often. I was watching him put up temporary fence. And at first, the initial reaction is, what is this guy doing? This looks a little crazy. After visiting with him and working with him a little bit, we have, for the last five years, moved our cattle more. Um, been very purposeful on where we put our cattle with temporary fence. Water has been our struggle. Spring of 2013, I started losing calves, baby calves. Um, they'd live three, four days, weak, struggle, pulled liver samples, uh, got to started working with a guy named Dr. Blaine Hopfoff out of Mandan, a nutritionist, veterinarian. We started testing all our water, and we were super high in sulfates out of our artesian and our dams. And since the spring of 2013, we test water all the time. We found out our dams are high in sulfates. I guess, talk about the artesian wells. There's one here on our place that we purchased from Hollenbeck's. Uh, one at my dad's place, uh, they both went bad. Uh, bad meaning reduced flow. Um, Dad's, I'm sure, was over 50 gallons a minute. It's down to 11. Uh, this well on this place was better than 30 gallons a minute. It's down to five. And the sulfates have gone from, we tested them in 06. We had 600 parts per million sulfates and now they're over 2,500. So we had to really start thinking about, okay, how do we handle this? How do we handle sulfates? Uh, it's hard on breed up, it's um, hard on immune system. Again, Daryl Smith, I say enough about him, he allowed us to hook into a system that pulls water out of the Missouri River and um, things turned around. We saw cattle gain better, our health on our cattle improved immensely. Um, so we've started putting in pipelines. Again, NRCS helped us with Equip on this place out of Corson County. Anymore, it's pretty rare our cows are drinking out of dams on this place. It's 
water out of the Lake Oahe. I don't know what we would do without it. We were at a loss. I won't say a number, but it's a little bit beyond my comprehension that Eli was responsible for all of our livestock for six weeks. I didn't see him. Real life experience. You know, I work in a school system. I can't create that for a student in a, in a school system, what they learn here. Our daughter Sylvia is a little bit younger. She's doing the same thing. Usually it's my dad's call, but I'm, I understand when they need to move. I notice when the grass, it's when it's time to move them and we'll discuss it and then make a plan. Some of the things I do here on the ranch are just the day-to-day -day stuff with my dad and then the taking care of animals just around the yard. Moving fences, moving cows. When he feels like he's managing things and doing things uh, in a way that fits well with what he wants to do and fits well just with nature and taking care of the land, He's a lot happier, a lot less stressed out, and then that definitely carries over to, to the whole family. I can see the results. I can see what's going on. I, mean, I don't want to be the first guy out. I, I want to be the early adapter on these practices. It's exciting. We keep moving in a new direction.